Not yet. Participate, boy. Participate. Hello, folks. Here's your news items from the World Tower. We start off with a flash on the Randolph Wilson heart bomb trial, which had just been concluded. Doggone! Shh! I want to hear this. I know the regular listeners will be willing to wait for their stock reports. Those of you who have followed the scorching testimony in the Randolph Wilson case will be interested to learn the verdict. Miss Verna Wilson was awarded $100,000 heart bomb and $20,000 for injured reputation. Hot dog, heads up, Hollum. Here I come. Say, who win this case? Miss Wilson did. But when she's flush with money, show is I. And boy, she show is solving now. There's Miss Wilson now. Get these things out here to keep it, boy. Quick. Lucy, I won. I know it. The newsman just broadcast the verdict. He did? What did he say? He seemed as glad as if he was in on the split. It's Mr. DeLeon, Miss Wilson. Send him in. How are you, Lucy? Fine, thank you. Good. How'd they treat me? There are enough pictures to satisfy even you. You might have kept this awful thing out of the paper. You should break out in a rash. There's not even a picture of me in the paper. Uh-oh. This is not so good. What's not so good? Mrs. Randolph, wife of a millionaire, who has maintained that her husband was framed by a group of extortionists, is assertively leaving the middle age back. She's a fool. John Randolph is really a fine man. But Jane, don't 30 years of devotion count anything in my favor? John. I agreed to hide my personal feelings in this hideous escapade only till the verdict was reached. But Jane, let's... That is Dick. Please pretend to believe in me until I can talk to him. Hello there, Holly. You're looking well, Mr. Richard. Well, thank you. You're looking very well yourself. Thank you, sir. Mother. Oh, Richard. Oh, I'm so glad you've returned. I wonder if you know what I... Now, now, Mother. I'm going to take you in hand presently. Hello, Dad. Hello, Dick. Glad to see you. Uh, thanks. I've read the papers about Mother leaving us and the verdict. And I want you to know, Dad, that I don't believe a word of it. Uh, if I can cut in Mr. Randolph, that goes for me, too, only double. Thank you, Larry. Larry's a great guy. <laughs> Now, Mother, now listen, you're not going to leave Dad. How can I remain here and hold my self-respect? By keeping faith with Dad. You know he never had an affair with that woman. But 12 men on the say he did. Yes, 12 men believing Dad was like them, but he's not. He's not. Didn't her lawyer offer to settle out of court? Yes, for $50,000. You see, Mother? If we stand together, we can beat that judgment yet. Now, if you'll promise to forget all pride, all jealousy, and stand with Dad, I'll patch up the Randolph name so there'll never be a scar. John, I've tried so to believe in you. And you're going to, dear. Have you any plan, Dick? Well, nothing definite, Dad. I'm going to show up that blackmailer if it's the last thing I do. What kind of a lawyer are you? For ten days, I have nothing but weak-kneed alibis. Have you heard anything? Plenty. Now listen to me. I'm going to Europe and I'm not for any appeals. You're paid plenty to do that. I want you to go to Europe. 
I've exerted every effort to make your trip possible, but... Oh, don't you butt me again. No. You've done... Well, you're off the front page. They bumped the gambler. Telegram from Ms. Wilson. Telegram for you, Miss Wilson. I got to get away. Europe, South America, anywhere but tonight. Why, what's wrong? Oh, it's nothing you'd understand. Mr. Howell, I've got to have some money. It's imperative. Well, now, let me see what's in the telegram. If you're in trouble, I can help you. I'm afraid not this time. Look up the sailings. Find the first good boat leaving port. Okay. Maybe I can help you. A loan broker has agreed to uh, advance you 10000 on the judgment. I persuaded him that it will hold... For how much money? 25000 Why, the jip. It's robbery. I wouldn't even consider it. I thought maybe you needed it. So I made out a contract. But... What a bunch of leeches. First you get 50%, Juan gets 10%, and I get 10,000. But my dear, the difference is that you at least get yours. We may never get a dime for our trouble. All right. I'm hooked. Give me the contract. What time does the first boat sail? The Romania on the 8th. Start on book passage, first class. For Vera Wendell. For who? Vera Wendell. I think a change of name will save embarrassment after the late notoriety. I've arranged passports under that name. Right. Well, goodbye, my dear. Be very cautious with your love affairs. Remember, I'll not be in Europe to help protect your virtues. Goodbye. Wait for me, Hal. Can I be of any help? I, I mean the telegram. No, thanks. I'll have to handle that matter myself. Well, if I can be of any assistance, phone me. Bon voyage, Sherry. Tell you what was in that telegram? Not a word. Must have been serious. She nearly fainted. Well, I'd like to know what's in it. She sails on the Romania under the name of Vera Wendell. The Romania, eh? Now, there you are, Flynn. That's for you. 
Thanks, Mr. Randolph. And thank you. Anytime you want a nice, quiet job done, just send for me. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Good luck, Wim. So long. Any luck, Dick? Best in the world, Dad. She's sailing tomorrow. Did you ring, sir? Hey, yes, fine, Larry. Send him in here, will you? Yes, sir. Dick, I don't like your seeing that woman. She's truly dangerous. Dangerous when you don't know her game, but I do. Uh, will you see Mr. J.B. Morrison, sir? Well, I see Lucky. Well, I'll say I'll see that old Texas Longhorn. <laughs> well, <laughs> you <laughs> son of a Texas cyclone. <laughs> Jack, Jack. I want you to meet Richard Rowland, my general manager. He, uh, he's the class of the Morrison outfit. Oh, oh, oh. glad to meet you. Very glad to know you. Hey, come on, come and see everybody. Ooh. Why do I know you're coming down? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Dick, you remember Mr. Morrison, don't you? Indeed I do. How do you do, Mr. Morrison? Well, they've been busting a Bronx lately, Dick. <laughs> Not lately, Mr. Morrison, but I haven't forgotten the trick you taught me. <laughs> <laughs> this is his general manager, Mr. Rowland. Uh -huh. Jack? Hey, I'm a great favor to ask uh, no, you. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Ask anything, consider it granted. Great. Now, uh, <clears throat> you, might have, uh, you might have read where I'm taking a fall out of Europe. No, I hadn't heard of it. Well, you see, I, that is, well, well, Roland fixed it up. He booked passage and everything. The truth is, I want certain coyotes in Wall Street to figure me on the ocean. But I'm going to stay right here in New York and watch them. Right, please. Now, here's the favor I want. We go aboard ship, leave the luggage there, then we sneak back here and hibernate. You're welcome as long as you want to stay. Ask what boat you're booked on. Why, uh, on the Romania. Romania? Yes. You sent for me, Mr. Dick? Hey, yes, Larry. Come here a minute. <laughs> Dad, I've got an idea. Now, Lucky doesn't want to sail, but I must. Larry here will go as Lucky Morrison, and I'll sail as Richard Rowland. Now, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Why do you want to take him as Lucky Morrison? Why, can't you see? This little gold digger that has framed and blackmailed my dad will fall very readily for a great big Texas oil magnet. And that'll enable me to vindicate my dad. Sure, I see it. And he, well, he's big enough for a Texas oil king. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Larry, uh, when Mr. Rowland's luggage arrives, you pack my things in his trunk. Well, do I take Mr. Morrison's trunk? That's the idea exactly. We're sailing tomorrow at midnight. Now make it snappy. Yes, sir. Hello, everybody. I'm announcing myself. Hello, honey. Hello, dear. How are you? <laughs> I'm grand. That's good. Hello, Dad. Huh? You know how I feel about this case, don't you? Oh, thank you, Claudia, dear. Claudia, I want you to meet Dad's pal. Mr. Morrison. Not Lucky Morrison. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dick has told me a great deal about you. Oh, he has, eh? Mm, hello, Claudia, dear. Hello. Glad to see you looking yourself again, Mother. Thank eh? you. <laughs> Dad? Mother? Well, what is this? The future Mrs. Randolph. <laughs> well, well, I don't know which one of you kids going to be the happiest. <laughs> well, our mother is trying to make us very unhappy right now. <laughs> well, and throw her out. <laughs> oh, yes, and now she's insisting that I sail with her for Europe. I hope your mother isn't dragging you off to Europe to take you away from me. I'm afraid she is, darling. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't see where the humorous part comes in. Well, we weren't going to tell mother, but now I must. What? Larry and I are sailing to Europe for the sole purpose of polishing up the Randolph coat of arms. Good morning.
Morning, gorgeous. Juan, what are you doing on this boat? <laughs> Following you, Sherry. Still trying to impress you with my charm. I wish you'd forget you ever knew me. No man with red blood could ever forget you, dear. That lets you off. <laughs> now, now, wait a minute. I've just lined up a, shall we say, new victim who will bring even greater results than Randolph. Yes, well, in the future, I'll pick my own victims. And the next one will be young. Well, this fellow isn't ancient. And Bradstreet rates him at about, uh, about eight million. Morrison is his name. He's manager Roland. He's rather keen. But Morrison, huh, he should be easy. I'll look him over, but promise nothing. Now get out while I dress. How's my little Cupid feeling? I can't feel. <laughs> Say, is there any hope of this tub doing a nosedive? I hardly think so, Cupid. Just a moment. Here we are. You take a couple of these Mother Sills pills. They'll fix you up in about two minutes. I'll take them, but I won't promise to keep them. <laughs> Well, I've seen her. Has she got it? Yes. And strange to say, she looks like a lady of culture. Yeah. I know the breed. With a great sorrow in her life. If I can keep the deck from clunking me in the nose, I'll take a look at this wrong woman. I know dames. 
Now listen, Larry. For the love of Mike, forget that New York dialect. You're supposed to be from Texas. Hey, I'll be so western she'll smell the sagebrush. Hey, and another thing. Don't you ever make any advances. She's got to fall for you. That ain't gonna be hard. Dames go for us athletes. All right, all American. Beastly thing off my shoulder. How can I caught a lady looking like a doddering old fossil? But, my lord, you know the sea air always makes you wheeze. How dare you say I wheeze, sir? I may rattle a bit and, and creak, but... Damn it, sir, I never wheeze. <laughs> What are you standing there gaping for? Can't you straighten me up, you idiot, you? <laughs> Thank you. That's better. Better. Now, you must locate Miss Wilson's chair. I observed that. Uh, when she came on board last night, but I, I lost her in the crowd. But, my lord, I've spoken to the purser, and there's no Miss Wilson on the passenger list. Mm. Purses are sometimes mistaken. <laughs> hey, in the crowd there. Come. Here we are, Mr. Morrison. Just sit right down here and make yourself comfortable. You'll feel much better out here in the open air. If this chair was a broke, I'd have a better chance of keeping it between my knees. Yes, Mr. Morrison. I'm sorry, I believe this is your magazine. Why, that's perfectly all right. Keep it, we have several of them. Oh, I wouldn't think of depriving you. Oh, no depravity. No depravity. Here, Dick. Go round up a herd of them things for the little lady. Yes, Mr. Morrison. Please. Thank you. Well, that ends that argument. We'll all have some pictures to look at. You're very considerate. I don't reckon you have to do much rustling to get consideration. Not with them pretty eyes. Your flattery is as broad as your draw, Mr. Morrison. J.B. Lucky Morris. Lucky? I sense a romance there. Well, you're right, ma'am. Some men say they're self-made. Well, ain't even that. I'm uh, oil-made. Really? Want to hear how I come by the name of Lucky? I'm always interested in knowing how men acquire their wealth. Well, it was way down in Texas. I had a few head of cattle and a couple of thousand acres of grazing land. And, lady, that land was just floating in oil. Well, lady, I'd sure like to take you up on top of the highest hill on that old ranch. As far as you can see, nothing but oil wells. And they're all mine. I want to send a radiogram, please. Sure. To Miss Claudia Elliott, Chair John Randolph, River, New York. Everything progressing nicely. Love to Mom and Dad. Don't shortchange yourself. Dick, charge that to cabin 122, please. Thank you very much, sir. I tell you, I don't blame your old man for falling for her. No guy could be in there and keep his mitts off her. Why, you poor simp. I thought you were woman-proof. Instead, you've been acting like a lovesick schoolboy for the past five days. Throwing yourself at her head every opportunity you get. Well, you're not so sure of yourself. You don't let her get near you. Now, look here, Larry. I'm going to handle this from now on. 
You may out of sight. Don't do it, Mr. Dick. Give up a revenge gag before she hooks you. Hooky? Why, Larry, I'm surprised you. Good morning, Miss Wendell. I'm so sorry I kept you waiting. Good morning. I was convinced that you had completely forgotten our engagement. You'll pardon us, won't you, Baron? We promised to beat the Whirlings at Shuffleboard. Spiggins. My shawl. Now follow them and see that they do play Shuffleboard. Yes, my lord. You know, I'm a total loss at shuffleboard. Let's stroll instead. I owe you everlasting gratitude for saving me from the Baron. Now, careful, please. You know, when you look at me like that, well, you almost make me believe you. Please believe. It would hurt me frightfully if you doubted me. I wonder if you know when you're flirting and when you're not. That was most unkind. Yes, unkind, but true. Because I tolerate these others about me. Please don't believe me incapable of real love. If you can distinguish it from the brand you use to fascinate men like Mr. Morrison, the Baron, and, uh... And who? Oh, doubtless others. Women of your great arm and beauty must have many men in their lives. Many men, perhaps. But only one love. I want you to believe that. learned about women from her. You'll probably make me a very odd foot. Yes, quite. Now take your two present bows. Mr. Morrison and the Baron. Which would make you the better husband? The uncouth Mr. Morrison or the elderly, though polished, Baron? Are you trying to hurt me? On the contrary. I'm vastly curious. I should say, Mr. Morrison, one can acquire polish. But old age always seems so lonely. You know, I have a positive horror of growing old alone. And I wonder if we give enough consideration to other people's old age. What do you mean? I was thinking of a case I read about a while back. A fine couple, married for 30 years, who may spend their old age apart and lonely through the whim of a very beautiful woman. I'm sorry to bore you with my philosophizing, but you see, since that case, I've been unusually suspicious of women. Shall we resume our stroll? How much of that case did you follow? None. It wasn't the case that interested me, but the result. I wonder if people would do those things if they knew the ultimate result. Oh, I'm sure they wouldn't, because most women are fundamentally good. Dick, I think I'll rest. May I look forward to at least once tonight? I shall expect you, Morrison, and the Baron more than once. Thank you. I'll see you at dinner.
by coming in here without permission? I just want to bring you down to earth. Now listen. Get any idea of love for Roland out of your mind. Morrison is the man we're after. I never promised to go through with this Morrison deal. No. But you're not going to let his millions slip through your fingers for a silly love affair. If Dick Roland loves me, nothing else means anything. Do you love him that much? He's the only man I ever loved, or ever will. All right. If you can hook Roland, I'll take a fade-out powder. If not, we are going to work Morrison for the shakedown. window down to dinner today. Not yet. I suppose we shall have the pleasure of seeing you dancing tonight. No. Very considerate of you. Say, she ain't short. Now, don't get nervous. She's probably waiting to make a grand entrance. I hope that's it. I'm going to build up courage to propose tonight. That's the idea. Hey, just a minute. Where do you think you're going? To build up my courage. Mm Who's there? Let me see you a minute. Are you alone? Yes. Open the door. Come in. Say, what's happened? You look like you've seen a ghost. I have. Jimmy's on this boat. Jimmy! Then you didn't write this. Do you think he'll bump us? Of course he would. We have it coming to us, haven't we? Cheating Jimmy would be some satisfaction. Suicide? Why not? Not to me. Not if I can help it.
Dear Vera, you're a swell dish, and I, I ain't even, I. No, that ain't refined. She likes her, her men cultured. Sweetheart, I've got eight million bucks that you can have. <laughs> you know it. Why, you are him. I shall summon the ship's physician. Oh, no, no, please don't. It's nothing to worry about, just a headache. I'll feel better presently and join you. <laughs> Do, my fool. You know, the moon is perfect for lovers today. And you know I, I'm at my best under the spell of Luna. Good evening, Baron. Oh, Mr. Rowland. I, I just left Miss Wendell. She's looking very, very bad. Why, she won't even let me show her the moon. I am hastening to find the ship's musician, to, uh, physician to go to. Well, that's too bad. What's the matter with you, Larry? You can't remember nothing. Uh, uh, anything. Uh, oh, now which is it? Anything or nothing? Oh, what's the grammar? Nothing, 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 or nothing. Come on there, Romeo. Snap out of it. Oh, what's the matter? Anything or nothing. Hey, listen, huh? you're overestimating I, your capacity for courage. No, sir, Dickie. Step right I, down here. Come on, now. I, I feel just mellow enough to be romantic. Now, I'm going down and try to persuade the Lady Vera to come up on deck. And when you're feeling all right again, you come up and ask her for a dinner. Propose. Now, do you think you can do that? It's the same as done. I've come to escort you to the festivities. Ah, 
there you are. You gave me a bad moment when you did that, sir. I've had some rather bad moments myself tonight. Then you should join the merrymakers. You'll always feel blue when you're alone. The moon is lovely tonight. And the lights of the coast are twinkling just like little stars on the horizon. I think you read that line somewhere. It sounds too romantic for you to mean. <laughs> I think I did. But it's unkind of you to remind me of my lack of romance. Especially on a night like this. Oh, do come along. Why not? I can finish what I was doing later. Right. And when you're ready, don't call your maid. I'll hook you. Thanks. I'm so silent. I'm wondering if John Alden felt as awkward as I do. <laughs> well, I warn you, I have none of Priscilla's timidity. You know what happened to John. Well, in that case, we'd better dance. Oh, no. You promised to show me the coast lights that look like little stars dotting the horizon. Like that. I can't understand how you ever kept them laughing at me. I would have if anyone but you had said it. But you see, women are fools where the one man is concerned. Cut in long enough to ask for the next dance? Why, certainly, sir. Oh, I don't believe so, Lucky. But if you won't dance, will you talk it out with me? I got something I must say. Miles is himself again. Now, if you'll pardon me, I'll run down and look after my luggage. I've been trying for a week to get it nerve enough to, to say that I... I'm oh, you're a wonderful fellow, Lucky. But the answer is no. But I practiced this, and now you won't even listen. I know, Lucky. And I'd be really glad to marry you if I didn't love Dick. Surely you must have seen it. Well, have you told this to Dick? Not in so many words. Well, I'm going to tell him. Oh, no, please don't. Perhaps you won't have to if you tell him I refused your proposal. Well, he's going to know it. I'm going to see this. I ain't had much experience at matchmaking, but I'll sure try. Thanks, Lucky. Will she marry you? No. She wouldn't even let me get started. She says, you're a wonderful fellow, Lucky. But the answer is no. But didn't you tell her about all the millions that you had? When I tried to speak my piece, she lays her hand gentle on my arm and says, I'd be really glad to marry you, Lucky, if I didn't love Dick. Why, she's a little gold digger. I don't believe she's capable of any real love. She may have been everything we thought her, but she's changed. But when she talks about you, her voice goes all goose pimply. Why well, trembles? Couldn't this love thing change a woman like that? Gold diggers have been known to turn right, ain't they? I don't know. I started out to make her care for me, and now, well, I haven't the heart to hurt her. You started out to hook a blackmailer that's going clean because of her love for you. Don't them Salvation Army gals say something about more whoopee in heaven over one skirt that turns clean than a whole Sunday school full of them that don't need the gold dust? Where did you leave her? In her room. I promised her I'd tell you she loved you and send you to her. Well, what are we going to do now? I don't know. Listen. Hello. 
And well, come on. Spill it, Jimmy. Spill it. How much does this Roland fellow mean to you? Everything. As much as you meant to me before, before that rat stole you? Yes, Jimmy. That much. Great. Now it's going to be some satisfaction to keep you from getting him. It'll take more than your insane desire for revenge to scare me, Jimmy. You call it insane, eh? I did 1,376 days because you two wanted me out of the way. I'd have gone insane if it wasn't because I swore four times a day to come out and wreck you. I'm not interested in that. I'm only interested in Dick Rowland. What do you know about him? I know. Rowland will tell you. I don't want to spoil it for him. Jimmy, if I can make Dick Rowland love me, will you give me my chance at happiness? You tell him the lowdown on the Randolph job. That old man Randolph helped you with your musical career. And how you and Juan hooked him. Just tell him that. And if he'll still go for you, I'll clam. All right, Jimmy. I'll tell him. Never mind, Phony. I'll bring him up here. Radiogram, Mr. Rowland. Thank you. What is it? Listen. Your mother has disappeared. The scandal is killing her. Make that woman confess. Sign Claudia. Cabin 102, please. Yes, I know she's retired, but this is very important. Please call her. Miss Wendell speaking. Why, yes, miss, of course I'll meet you. On V-deck. Yes, in a few minutes. Did you tell him? Not a thing. You come clean on the Randolph job, and I'll land. What's your, what's your racket, Jimmy? Why do you want to squawk on the Randolph job? You're just itching to know, ain't you? Yes. I still have a split coming from that job. Well, you'll be a long time getting it. You know, Roland's a phony name. That guy's John Randolph's son. There's something I must tell you. Well, 
first, there's something I've got to tell you. Good. That'll make my confession much easier. Did Lucky explain? Yes. That you care for me. But I love you. Oh, Dick, why stand on ceremony? Why shouldn't a woman be just as free to tell the truth as a man? I'm not ashamed of my love for you. What about your love for John Randolph? Why, I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. What does this mean? That my mother has left my father because of you. I'm John Randolph's son. Why the masquerade, Dick? Why the name of Roland? Don't act for me. You can clear my father's name and bring my mother back. Will you do that? Oh, Dick. Evidently, you had me confused with someone else. You're a I... Baron o. Wilson, a notorious blackmailer. And you're going to admit that if I have to trade you clear around the globe. You understand that? Dick, you're mad. Let go of me. Yeah, well, Wiltshire, you didn't have the nerve to tell him. Well, I'm going to tell him everything now. You're going to tell him nothing. Let go of me. Go of me. Ow! Go! me, I'll make her talk. I'll make them both talk, not only about your dad, but about other jobs. I'm trying to tell you, I've been trying to tell you all along. This rat de Leon stole her from me for his rotten blackmail racket. She promised to come clean, but she lost her nerve. I've been trying to make her do it. I've been trying to make her admit how she framed your dad and everything. <laughs> 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 Now listen, we've got to stick together. Swear, swear he shot your ex-husband in a quarrel over you. I won't blame Dick for this. But he's trying to take you back to clear his dad. And if he does, it means 10 years for extortion. just been shot. What? I must get the doctor. Just what occurred, sir. Just what happened, sir? I had an appointment here with a lady. After she left me, I heard her scream. Is that the lady, sir? Yes, it's the lady. Will you kindly explain just what happened, miss? Mr. Rowland's fighting with the injured man when a shot was fired. They were struggling in the shadow. I couldn't see who fired the gun. Now, that's not true. The time the shot was fired, we weren't struggling. The injured man was trying to explain something to me, which this lady obviously didn't want me to hear. The shot was fired to silence him. Well, Mr. Dillon, Captain, this gentleman was quarreling with the injured man, sir, when the shot was fired. The lady witnessed the quarrel, but is not certain who fired the shot. Oh. I'm sorry, sir, but we'll have to put you in irons. The gentleman is dead.
You are free to retire to your cabin. Thank you. We'll have to lock you up, sir. Captain. Wait. I'm sorry, Dick. For a moment, I hated you. I lied, Captain. Dick didn't shoot him. Never mind going for that doctor. Hey, I got to take you off. Let me go, I say. I warn you, anything you say will be used against you. Let's go. Juan de Leon killed Jimmy Wilson to prevent him from exposing our crookedness. I'll explain everything. Shut up, you fool. Captain, I caught this guy trying to hide. Ah, take your hands off of me, you big cluck. I'll wrap you for this. Captain, he killed him, I swear it. Why, you... Come here, you. I'm awfully sorry this thing happened, sir. That's perfectly You're... all right, Captain. All right, come on, I want to talk to you. Now, Captain, I can explain everything. I can just know you. Thanks, Vera. That was fine of you. Dick, you can tell your father I'll come back and clear him. If there's anything I can do nothing. I'd go all the way for you. Thanks, Blackie. But I've got to go all the way. Alone. <laughs> 